Great leader, checking in. Great two, checking in. Great three, checking in. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 aerial dogfights in movies. For this list, we'll be looking at the best aerial battles in the history of film. We'll be including both historical and fictional forms of aviation, so long as they're mid-air conflicts between two sides. We'll also be including science fiction dogfights that occur in space, even though there's technically no air. We're also thankful to have a real fighter pilot with us to break down some of the logistics of these scenes. Hi, I'm Scratch Mitchell. I'm a former fighter pilot and leader of the Canadian Air Force Snowbirds jet team. I'm an airshow pilot and I'm a film pilot. Since some of these scenes contain spoilers, expect a few to fly in low. Any dogfights we missed? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. American Response. Tora Tora Tora. Much like another film on this list, this war epic sought to dramatize both the events of and those leading up to the bombing of Pearl Harbor, and like that aforementioned other film, to middling results. But let it not be said that when push comes to shove, the movie doesn't choreograph some of the best action sequences the early 70s had to offer. Indeed, the Japanese bombers launch a devastating surprise attack on the U.S. naval base. The Americans take to the skies to launch a counteroffensive against a set of A6M Zero fighter planes. After the Americans get the drop on their enemies via cloud coverage, what ensues is an almost balletic display of aerial mastery. Not only is it shot practically, and I have a, a love for practically shot aviation, but they really capture the dynamics of aerial dogfighting. Number 19. Dead Zeppelin. Flyboys. This forgotten war drama also flew in under expectations, but there's at least some competent flying sequences to break up the cookie cutter story. The film documenting the Lafayette Escadrille unit during World War I, their most bombastic outing has to come at the expense of a German Zeppelin. The unit racks up a few kills of their own, but largely fails to bring down the big airship before Porter and Cassidy are riddled with bullets. Unwilling to give the villainous Black Falcon the satisfaction, the mortally wounded Cassidy resolves to go out in a literal blaze of glory by dive-bombing the Zeppelin with his plane. Say what you will about the mid-2000s CGI on display, but Flyboys certainly has a flair for the dramatic. It's very frenetic. It shows the chaos of aerial dogfighting, particularly in World War I when the airplanes were really slow and really close together, and so it captures that well. Number 18. Firefox Duel. Firefox. So this is an interesting scene. I was a little boy when I saw this, and to me, it was the most magical thing I've ever seen. I loved it. I love Clint Eastwood, and uh, I, I haven't watched this thing in 30-some years. The special effects in Firefox aren't amazing, but that'll partially happen when you're rendering fictional aircraft. Indeed, the MiG-31, codenamed Firefox, is an incredibly high-tech jet that can reach speeds of Mach 6, avoid radar detection completely, and be weaponized with a single thought. Sound ridiculous yet? You're right, it is. But the climactic dogfight makes for memorable early 80s viewing. And in fact, some behavior patterns are picked up by computers that would recognize if a pilot's incapacitated and recover the airplane. So we're not that far away. So there's some truth to it. Clint Eastwood's Major Gant finds himself going mano a mano with Soviet pilot Voskov and a pair of Firefoxes over the Arctic tundra. The scene's more of a high-speed chase than a firefight, but Gant's ultimately able to lose the heat with rear defenses by thinking in Russian. Number 17. P-40 Retaliation. P-40 
Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor, uh, as a fighter pilot, I watched this and I groaned. I'm like, oh my God, they're going into a love triangle. And I, at least I got to escape once in a while in the air in this movie and feel a little bit of uh, aerial combat. Forget all the sappy romance fluff that gives this wannabe epic its lengthy runtime. Here, Michael Bay delivers all you could expect from his version of the attack on Pearl Harbor, namely, lots of explosions. After the wanton destruction brought upon by the surprise attack, protagonists Rafe and Danny manage to get themselves in the cockpits of a pair of P-40 fighter planes and take to giving their foes a taste of their own medicine. So this P-40 scene is actually kind of cool. There's there's energy, you get to see airplanes tor torching around the sky, and there's some fun in it. The sequence is decidedly action-packed, replete with quick cuts and extravagant imagery. A deadly game of chicken then breaks out as Rafe and Danny up the ante with some impressive coordination of their own. Number 16, Attack of the Drones, Oblivion. When you think of Tom Cruise dogfighting scenes, there's probably one singular movie that comes to mind. Don't worry, we'll get there. But for now, let's dip our toes into the sci-fi genre to touch on one of his more lesser seen ventures. Well, I love when they bring aerial combat into science fiction. I think it brings some relevancy to things and it allows us to sort of bridge those worlds a little bit. So I love when they do dogfights in sci-fi. In this one, Cruz plays technician Jack Harper, who's employed to repair combat drones on a war-ravaged Earth. Upon getting wise to the shadiness of his employers, Jack flees with survivor Julia in his craft, but they're pursued by drones themselves. This scene's kind of interesting because, oh, by the way, we're developing more and more nowadays uh, unpiloted combat vehicles. And so this is not outside the realm of, of, of reality. Using his surroundings like a lightning storm and a cramped canyon, Jack maneuvers his way out of an imposing situation before crash landing himself. Even in a so-so genre flick, you can always rely on Joseph Kaczynski's kinetic direction to keep things interesting. Number 15, Barnstormer Chicken, The Great Waldo Pepper. Give us your thoughts on, on this particular scene, Scratch, and have you ever played chicken in a fighter jet? Who said you need an aircraft firing on one another to make for a great dogfight? In this period piece that flew in at the height of Robert Redford's popularity, he plays the titular pilot who feels he missed out on the glory of World War I. He turns to barnstorming, which eventually leads him to Hollywood, working as a stunt pilot. During filming of a scene, Waldo and German pilot Ernst Kessler Sand's weapons begin dogfighting for real, using their planes to play a dangerous game of chicken. It's a thrilling alternative sort of dogfight, which sees Waldo eventually damage Kessler's Fokker beyond flying capabilities. The film ends with Waldo and Kessler saluting each other, the former having experienced dogfighting glory. This particular scene is really cool because what I love about it as a fighter pilot is I saw the spirit of the fighter pilot in the scene and they captured it so well, Robert Redford nailed it. Number 14, A Family Affair. Iron Eagle. 1986 was a tough year to come out with a fighter jet themed action movie, as Iron Eagle got swamped with poor comparisons to that other Tom Cruise dogfighting movie we mentioned earlier. And most of those criticisms are warranted, as the story about a teenager who almost single handedly rescues his dad from an overseas compound is ridiculous, in case that synopsis didn't imply as much but it definitely nails pure 80s cheese in its climactic sequence. Oh, yeah. Not only is the young Doug able to decimate an entire military base and trick them into releasing his father, but he manages to abscond with him and outduel an ace pilot in the process. So you add this new technology with the preposterous amount of cheese that the 80s brought, 
and we get Iron Eagle. The 80s really were a different time, weren't they? Number 13, Keeping Up With The Joneses, Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. All of our dogfights so far have been entirely serious, but leave it to a middle-aged Sean Connery to liven things up a bit. 11 o'clock! Damn, 11 o'clock! What happens at 11 o'clock? Escaping from a German Zeppelin, Indy and his pops Henry commandeer a biplane only to be pursued by some Luftwaffe fighters. Having endured Nazi chase scenes before, you'd think Indy would be able to handle himself. But it turns out Henry is his greatest threat in this sequence. Sitting in the gunner's seat, Henry tries to defend the plane, only to take out their own rudder. Hit! Are we hit? More or less. John, I'm sorry. They got us. It's a short sequence, but one that had us laughing then and now. We may be touching on an even more iconic Sean Connery character soon enough, though. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this end? Uh, would you rather Connery or Harrison Ford in your gunner seat? Well, th who doesn't like a scene with Sean Connery? It's my lucky day. Of course, this is fantastic. I, I loved it. Your impression was spot on. I loved it. Number 12, Tomcats versus Japanese Zeros. The Final Countdown. Okay, forget Iron Eagle. The Final Countdown might actually be the most ridiculous movie on this list. Why? Because it's about an aircraft carrier that inadvertently travels back in time as the crew is presented with the opportunity to prevent the attack on Pearl Harbor. All that being said, the plot does allow for things we'd otherwise never get to see, like some World War II era Zero fighters going up against more modern Tomcats. Who, who would actually win between that? Yeah, if you're familiar with those planes, the F-14 Tomcat and uh, the Mitsubishi Zero, like, are you familiar with, with these guys at all? It would be no contest. Those F-14s would eat those Japanese Zeros up in just seconds. Indeed, when our protagonists witness a civilian boat being fired upon by the Japanese Zeros, they dispatch their Tomcats to allay the threat. They initially try to intimidate the Zeros, but when they merely reroute for the carrier, the Tomcats open fire, and it is brutal. Number 11, Hit and Run, Memphis Belle. A lot of the dogfights on this list tend to accentuate the glory and awesomeness of aerial combat, but this one from Memphis Belle has a slightly different perspective. Telling the tale of the eponymous Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress Bomber, the movie gives an even greater POV glimpse of what it's like to be under attack in the skies. There are certain inaccuracies committed here and there, but that doesn't detract from the scene. For instance, wherein the bomber is set upon by enemy aircraft. Though it turns out to be nothing but a hit and run, the terrified look on Navigator Lowenthal says it all. I think this is one of the first movies that really immersed the audience into the cockpit and into the air, and I thought they did a really good job with that. Number 10, The Spectre of Pursuing Helicopters. You only live twice. Bond and aerial fight, Scratch, what's your take? Does it work? Uh, and also, could you wear a tuxedo in the pilot seat of these things? James Bond has piloted a lot of vehicles over the years, but an auto gyro might just be the most out there. During his Japanese adventure, he takes to the skies in one, nicknamed Little Nelly, in search of an island specter base. Confirming his suspicions, a fleet of enemy agents greet him with helicopters. It isn't long after the classic Bond theme kicks in that he's defending himself with Little Nelly's outfitted weaponry like a flamethrower. You'd think the helicopters would have a size and maneuverability advantage, but Bond has a Bond advantage, finishing them off with more weaponry like aerial mines and missiles. Who'd have thought one of the best Bond fight scenes would take place in the air? Flamethrowers and everything else that goes into packed into this tiny little helicopter. I think it's just pure fun, totally outrageous, inconceivable, but let's have it. Number nine, Lightning's Little Trick, Red Tails. 
Being about the Tuskegee Airmen, a group of mostly black pilots that formed during World War II, Red Tails should probably be better. But that's not to say it's without a few show-stopping moments. In this scene, the airmen are tasked with escorting a Boeing B-17 when they're attacked by a German fleet. I'm gonna show them a little trick I learned. At one point, hotshot pilot Lightning is pinned down, but turns the tables on his pursuer with a little switcheroo. So it broke pretty much every rule of physics that I know about, and certainly every rule of aerodynamics that I know about to make this happen. A lot of aviation enthusiasts will tell you this move is impossible, but it certainly makes for a cinematic moment. Lightning still isn't done making a name for himself, though, as he later goes after a Kriegsmarine destroyer for good measure. Number 8. Battle of Endor Star Wars Episode 6 Return of the Jedi You had to have known we'd be getting to Star Wars sooner or later. And you know what? We might not even be done. In this trilogy-capping extravaganza, Rebel ships hone in on the Death Star, only to realize it's a trap! The Rebel pilots hold their own as they wait for the strike team to disable the Death Star shields. Once they do, though, that's when the real fun begins. I loved it. I loved the way they, the weight of the tiny spaceships versus the massive Star Destroyers, the way they, they, they contrasted those and the maneuverability that was afforded in these little spacecraft that seemed plausible to me. Lando Calrissian, piloting the Millennium Falcon, leads a team into the tight bowels of the space station with TIE fighters on their tail. They manage to make it to the reactor core, destroying it and, by proxy, the Death Star. The Falcon is narrowly able to make it out before the final explosion rings out. <laughs> Number 7. Sky Battle – Hell's Angels Wow, 1930, and we barely have movies. Uh, let alone taking them in the sky and doing extremely complex maneuvering. Howard Hughes' war epic was perhaps too ambitious for its time, as evidenced by the plethora of technical issues and onset accidents that plagued the production. The film even failed to recoup its budget despite being the highest grossing film of the year. Still, it can't be ignored the impact it would have on filmmaking. And nowhere is that more evident than in the dogfighting sequences. There are no CG shots in this, and yet the sky is filled with airplanes. And so, unbelievable scenes that they were able to capture. And it took many years, I think, to do this. And I'm, I'm still at awe at the, the way they executed this. This battle among the clouds in particular remains visually striking, as the post-production conversion to make it a sound movie only adds that much more. While another entry on this list predated Hughes by a few years, there's still no getting around the magnitude on display here. Number 6. Welcome to Earth, Independence Day. I mean, Independence Day, we're fighting yeah. aliens. Scratch your thoughts and feel free to say welcome to Earth if you want. A fully fun ride from start to finish, Independence Day is the summer blockbuster that keeps on giving all these years later. After an alien invasion causes complete devastation upon some of the world's greatest landmarks, the humans launch a counteroffensive but are largely thwarted by the mothership's force fields. Therein begins more individual conflicts with smaller scale alien aircraft. The most notable dogfight sees Marine pilots Hiller and Wilder lead their immediate aggressors across the desert. After Wilder's shot down, Hiller weaves in and out of the Grand Canyon before getting the tailing ship to crash. I actually know Roland Emmerich because I worked on the Midway movie with him, and I can tell he was having fun when he made this. An action sequence of this caliber only needs a one-liner to punctuate it, and Hiller delivers it upon meeting his extraterrestrial rival. Welcome to Earth! Number 5. Protecting the Minesweeper – Dunkirk Leave it to Christopher Nolan to deliver one hell of a dogfight. 
Christopher Nolan did something that no one else had done at this point, using IMAX cameras to film aerial sequences in this movie. So, wow. The most recent entry on this list, Dunkirk splits the historical evacuation of the titular French city into three parts, land, sea, and air, the latter of which encompasses just an hour of narrative time. Honestly, the whole movie is a thrill ride all the way through, but if we had to choose one dogfight, it'd be the second. In this one, pilots Ferrier and Collins look to protect a minesweeper ship from enemy planes. Rather than go for showy stunts, Nolan relies on prime IMAX technology and a superb Hans Zimmer score to ratchet up the tension. Despite being one of the most grounded, this dogfight has our blood pumping every time. I loved it. I love what they did with it, and I think it'll go down as one of the pivotal pieces of aerial film work uh, of all time. Number four, Final Battle, Battle of Britain. The Battle of Britain is one of the films that anyone that's interested in film work, aerial film work, or even aviation needs to watch. The eponymous Battle of Britain occurred in 1940 and saw the Royal Air Force stave off a potential German invasion. The aptly titled film from 1969 proves worthy in momentousness. While we could pick from a handful of impressive dogfights, you just can't beat the finale, which takes a unique approach to dogfight filmmaking. Namely, it eschews sound effects entirely in favor of an orchestral score that props the scene up and then some. Playing out like a film serial of old, the scene perfectly captures the grace and violence of the aircraft in tandem. With an astounding production budget, Battle of Britain was a groundbreaking film in its day and holds up years later. Shooting it all practically again with real airplanes, using these rare warbirds, uh, almost every one that was in existence to film this, this movie. And so it was really impressive to see that. Number three, Trench Run. Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. The trench run is one of the best scenes of any movie of all time. I think it's, even if you're not a sci-fi fan, you would agree that is just unbelievable. With all respect to the Battle of Endor, the first time the Death Star was destroyed will always be the best. This time out, George Lucas was directly inspired by film serials of old with war films like The Dam Busters and 633 Squadron being specifically alluded to in the climactic trench run sequence. In it, the Rebels lead an assault on the Death Star in their X-Wings as they're engaged by Empire TIE Fighters, one of which is piloted by Big Bad Darth Vader. The Rebels suffer heavy losses, but Luke leads a charge through the trenches for the exhaust port. He's nearly shot down too, but a last minute save from Han Solo gives him the opportunity to blow the damn thing. I will say that this scene is one of the reasons I became a fighter pilot. Number two, opening dogfight, Wings. The first movie to win Best Picture, Wings, set the standard for all movie dogfights to follow not to mention action sequences in general. The, the dog fighting in the First World War was something of myth and legend and lore. And I think this movie brought it to people uh, up close and personal, and it captured that in, in a really remarkable way, given the technology of the day. Once again, depicting a dogfight between German and American forces, this scene pioneers several filmmaking techniques that would be used for decades to come, such as quick cutting to the pilot's chairs to get up close reactions from the characters. Not only that, but an applause worthy moment comes when two planes enter a head on collision. Even for a silent film, Wings manages to thrill as its groundbreaking visuals are paired with a terrific score. 
We can't imagine what it would have been like to be watching this one back in 1927. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Need for Speed – Top Gun I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! Top Gun is a product of the 80s, pure and simple, and with a lot of that comes a considerable amount of cheese. But if there's one thing it gets absolutely right from an entertainment standpoint, it's the flying sequences. Who doesn't like Top Gun? It really is the pivotal film of fighter pilots, and it probably will always be. Technically speaking, there's only one dogfight in the movie, excluding all the training sequences. But what about it is? After the Navy pilots had previously brushed up against enemy MiGs, this time a full-scale engagement ensues. Following a whole movie of being a hotshot pilot, Pete Maverick Mitchell finally recognizes the importance of never leaving your wingman. I got a good luck. Firing. Not only does he make an ally out of his rival, but he turns the table on his enemy and takes out the last one personally. Not entirely plausible, but even as a fighter pilot, I, I want to go on that journey with him because this is fun. And again, this is one of the movies that made me want to be a fighter pilot. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.